How's it going, people? The Words of Mormon is like two pages long. So, there's only one chapter. So, I just couldn't resist. It's a pretty thirsty little chapter, too. A little, little book, excuse me. A little two-page book. And I'm trying something new out here. Um, Pete's Wicked Strawberry Blonde. And I already poured it out. It had a frothy head. <laughs> ah. you know, there's no drinks yet, but I just can't resist. I want to see what this is like. Look how pretty that is. Hmm. Oh, damn, that's good. That's almost like a hard cider. But, yeah, this is a nail. It's a golden blonde lager with natural strawberry flavor. Oh, it kind of reminds me of a hard cider. Hmm. All right. And now I, Mormon, being about to deliver up the record which I have been making into the hands of my son Moroni. Behold, I have witnessed almost all the destruction of my people, the Nephites. So they're kind of jumping ahead to the end of the book here. Of course, this, none of this is really in sequence. That's what's uh, so hard to pin it all down. It's, you know, like the Koran jumps all around, except this pretends to be a linear story, but it isn't. It keeps jumping back and forth like a... Tarantino flick, except without the anything that <laughs> makes it interesting. <sighs> yeah, so he could see ahead to the destruction of, the in, in, entire destruction of his people. And we haven't even got there yet in the story. <sighs> Not a lot of surprises here, the way they do this. <laughs> but may God grant that he may survive may survive them. That's uh, Moroni, who becomes an angel and delivers the gold book to Joseph Smith. <laughs> that he may write somewhat concerning them and somewhat concerning Christ, that perhaps someday it may profit them. Uh, <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. He survived. He he wrote the last uh, chapters, did some more bad abridging, and... Uh, and then told the story of the uh, Jaredites. And, and then it was uh, credits at the end. <laughs> and now I speak somewhat concerning that which I have written. For after I had made an abridgment from the plates of Nephi, so even Mormon took a crack at at condensing this down. It's hard to believe. <laughs> Very hard to believe. This book runs long. It's not abridged. It's not condensed. If, if this is an abridgment, I'd hate to see the original. I mean, you probably had to write it on Fort Knox. <laughs> oh. Yeah, abridgment of the plates of Nephi down to the reign of of this king Benjamin, of whom Amalekai spake, I searched among the records which had been delivered into my hands, and I found these plates which contained this small account of the uh, prophets from Jacob down to the reign of this king Benjamin. Yeah, I know. It's, it's repetition. And also many of the words of Nephi, and boy, there were many. <laughs> and the things which are upon these plates pleasing me because of the prophecies of the coming Christ. Wait a minute. If you're talking about the end of the world and your people and all, then Jesus already came, didn't he? I thought, I thought you were jumping ahead. Now you're talking about Jesus coming. But he did show up, and he visited all the every honky in North America. <laughs> the coming of Christ. So I might be mistaken. You know, maybe that was just him seeing it ahead as a prophet. 
This Cassandra syndrome really will fuck with you. <laughs> of my fathers knowing that many of them have been fulfilled, these prophecies concerning Christ, behold, I also know that as many things have, have, have as have been prophesied concerning us down to this day, have been fulfilled, and as many as go beyond this point must surely come to pass. Ah. Damn. It's between a an ale and a or lager and a hard cider. That's interesting. Wow. Wherefore I chose these things to finish my record upon them. Which remainder of my record I shall take from the plates of Nephi, and I cannot write the hundredth part of the things of my people. But behold, I shall take these plates, which contain these prophecies and revelations, and put them with the remainder of my record. For they are choice unto me, and I know they will be choice unto my brethren. And I do this for a wise purpose. For thus, thus it whispereth me, according to the workings of the Spirit of the Lord. You know, feel the force and all. Which is in me. And now I do not know all things, but the Lord knoweth all things, and he ain't telling you, <laughs> which are to come, wherefore he worketh in me to do according to his will. And my prayer to God is concerning my brethren, that they may once again come to the knowledge of God, yea, and redemption of Christ that they may once again be a delightsome people. And now I, Mormon, proceed to finish out my record, which I take from the plates of Nephi, and I make it according to the knowledge and the understanding which God has given me. Wherefore, it came to pass that after Amalekai had delivered up these plates into the hands of King Benjamin, he took them and put them with the other plates, which contained records which had been handed down by the kings from generation to generation until the days of King Benjamin which is their current time. And they were handed down from King Benjamin from from King Benjamin from generation to gener generation until they had fallen into my hands. And I, Mormon, pray to God that they may be preserved from this time henceforth. <coughs> and I know that they will be preserved. Because you're a prophet. You just don't know everything. <laughs> you just prophecy revelations. And then you have revelations and prophecies. Because you like to repeat yourself. Because you all sound the same. Every one of these Mormon writer guys sound just like one guy. And I know that they will be preserved, for there are great things written upon them, out of which my people and my brethren shall be judged at the great and, and last day, or according to the word of God which is written. And now, concerning this King Benjamin, he had somewhat of contentions among his own people,
And it came to pass also that the armies of the Lamanites came down out of the land of Nephi. You can see Nephi and the gang split in the middle of the night and left the land of Nephi. <laughs> but they still call it the land of Le Nephi. Only the Lamanites live there now. <laughs> to battle against his people. Yeah. The Lamanites came down out of the land of Nephi to battle against his people. But behold, King Benjamin gathered together his army, and he did stand against them. And he did fight with the strength of his own arm. Was this an arm wrestle? Ah, strength of his own arm. Jeez, you just can't leave Isaiah alone, can you? And the sword of Laban. Ta-da! That magic sword of stolen steel. And in the strength of the Lord, they did contend against their armies until they had slain many thousands of Lamanites. Many thousands. And it came to pass that they did contend against the Lamanites until they had driven them out of the lands of their inheritance. <sighs> Where was I? And it came to pass that they did contend with the Lamanites until they had driven them out of all the lands of their inheritance. Yay! And it came to pass that after there had been false, false Christs and their mouths had been shut and they punished according to their crimes. And after there had been false prophets and the false preachers and false preachers and teachers among the people and all these having been punished according to their crimes. And after there having been many contentions and many dis many dissensions away into unto the Lamanites, also behold. <coughs> It came to pass that King Benjamin, with the assistance of the holy prophets who were among his people, for behold, King Benjamin was a holy man, and he did reign over his people in righteousness. And there were many holy men in the land, and they did speak the word of God with power and with authority. And they did use much sharpness because of the stiff neckedness of the people. Wherefore, with the help of these, King Benjamin, by laboring with all the might of his body <coughs> and faculty of his whole soul, and also the prophets, did once more establish peace in the land. And those are the words of Mormon. And uh, oh. and then next we get to uh, read a rather long-winded fellow named Mosiah. So it's almost like Nephi all over again. He's rather long-winded. Uh, something like almost 30 chapters long. And then Alma is also long-winded. 
but we do get some semblance of a history, and uh, that's something in the book of nothing. So, I will see you in uh, Mosiah. Peace the fuck out. And have a wonderful whatever the fuck it may be.